Oh, happy days. <laughs> How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly flavored, prosperous, victorious, anointed, and ready to kick some butt? Amen? God is good all the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master, for your mercies and grace and faithfulness and putting up with us. Hallelujah. I want to thank everybody for their prayers, for my brother, that he's home rejoicing. Hallelujah. We were very competitive in everything. I used to beat him at everything, but he beat me in this. He went home first. I wasn't supposed to be here. <laughs> I shouldn't have been here. I should have been at one home a long time ago. But God had another plan. Thank God it wasn't my plan. Hallelujah. You know, we know that there's so many things that are going on in the world today. And I just want to share with you the, not only the goodness of God, but in the area to where, uh, you know, he's faithful. You know, one of the things that, you know, it's hard to lose loved ones. Amen. But we, uh, we sorrow for our own selfishness. <laughs> and one of the things the Holy Spirit said to me as we were driving, he said, Guy, don't hold this against me. I told him I wouldn't. He said, it was your time for your brother to come home. I said, okay. He wanted to make sure that I didn't grieve him. He wanted to make sure that I didn't hold anything. See, because one of the things he wants is to perfect his love in us. See, the world uh, knows the love of the world, but they don't know the love of God. See, the world's love holds bitterness and unforgiveness, holds resentment, holds offense. That's why the Bible says don't love the world and the things in the world. He's not talking about the material things. He's talking about the heart of the world that is corrupt and deceptive and hard. See, the love of God, first thing, forgives. It loves. And, and, and in this love and forgiveness, it holds no bitterness. It, and the Word talks about what God's love is. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 13. It, it doesn't look for vengeance. God's the avenger. This love of God doesn't fear. And the Lord, the Lord began to reveal to me the difference between, and even in his own body, that say they love him, but they don't love him because they still have the love of the world in them. And they can't love God, even though they say they love God, because if the love of the world is still in them, you can't love God. You can say it all you want and hope it all you want, but you can't. Because only when the presence of God has totally taken you over and the love of God has taken every part and position of every member and membrane in you, then the love of God comes forth. It's very submissive. It's very obedient. It doesn't care because it doesn't love itself. His love loves him. It's not love of self. In fact, I, when he was telling me this, we drove by this big facility that said self-storage. I said, man, we, we need to rent that place and put everybody's self in there. You can store yourself in there, amen? <laughs> See, the love of God does not fight for himself. Have you noticed? It says the, the, the love of God, God so loved the world that he gave his life. When we become a Christian, Christ-like is to give your life, not fight for it. Amen? And that's where he says we must deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow. And so many can't do that. They're still fighting for their life, fighting for this, fighting for that, fighting for everything that pertains to the love of the world instead of the love of God. And what this does is it pulls them out of a place, what we call the rest in God. The rest in God. So many people can't rest. 
In fact, the powers of darkness can't rest. Amen? It says that they must do wickedness before they can even attempt to rest. And then they can't rest anyways. They're always looking for a place to rest, but they can't rest, but they're looking for a body to rest in so they can get fed. But there's a rest in God that's a place for every believer if they're willing to surrender into that rest. In Ephesians chapter 4, And the word says it on the seventh day God rested. Amen? In other words, and, and he was done. He rested. He completed what he was supposed to do. But it didn't mean he stopped. <laughs> See, there's a rest for me and you where we're no longer in our own abilities and talents. We're no longer striving we are resting because we're being carried. There's a difference of being carried and a difference of forcing something to happen. In verse 17, Ephesians 4, 17. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk or as, walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their minds. Having their understanding what? Darkened. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness and to work all uncleanness with greediness. He said, but you've not so learned <laughs> Christ. You've not so learned to rest in him. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which is anxious and fearful, arrogant, prideful, disobedience, and rebellious, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind or your thoughts, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in the true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. In other words, don't exaggerate, don't compromise, speak the truth, don't justify. All of those are open doors. He says, be angry, but don't sin. In other words, there's a righteous anger here. It's not a carnal anger, it's a righteous anger. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. All of these things he just expressed was giving place to the devil. And then he goes on to express it more. He says, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of his mouth. Why? It will what? Make place to the devil. But what is good for necessary edification, that it is that it may impart grace to the hearers. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, these are all things that grieve the Holy Spirit, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. In other words, in this he's saying, we come to a place where you are resting in God, where you're not, you're so rested in the Lord that you're being carried, you're being led. See, so many times people think, well, I'm being led, but no, actually many people aren't even not even being led. See, when you're led, you're carried. There's a difference. And so in this, when you are, are, are in the rest of God and you are led by the Spirit or carried by the Spirit, you are no longer sowing in the flesh. Amen? Why? Because sowing in the flesh makes place for the devil and grieves the Holy Spirit. You are maintaining the integrity of Christ in every area. Why? Because you are being carried by him. He 
You know, forsaking the integrity of Christ and reaping corruption, rejecting the love and peace and rest in God is what the enemy is trying to do. That's what his attempt is. And there's a purpose behind this, and we're going to talk about it. Go to Galatians chapter 6. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that the Holy Spirit always brings us, it says He tells us all things to come. If we're really in that place where we are hearing, seeing, and obeying. He tells you. See, every trap the enemy set up, the Holy Spirit is always telling you it's there. Every decision you're getting ready to make, the Holy Spirit's always telling you what's the outcome. He's always there to expose. Why? Because light exposes darkness. In verse 7, chapter 6, it says, don't be what? Deceived. Is anybody there? Galatians 6, verse 7, don't be deceived, don't be deceived, don't be deceived. Why? Satan's greatest weapon is deception. Isn't that how he gets everything? He deceives people and puts them in the spirit of bondage. That's what we see all over the globe. Don't be deceived. God's not mocked for whatever man sows, he shall what? Also reap. Nobody gets away with it. You know, and in this area of getting away with it, nobody gets away with it. I don't care what it is. Even after you've repented, you still reap. Now, it can turn to the good. And there may be consequences. Amen? Amen? Sometimes you'll have to pay back what you've done. But it's going to work to the good. This is where if you're in the place of rest with God, no matter what's happened, even in your mistakes, you know he's going to carry you through. You might have purchased something, done something, spent money wrongly. I don't care what it was. But if you're truly in the rest of God, he's going to carry you through. The whole thing is just accepting your consequences. Amen? repenting for it, knowing that consequences are going to come. And you, but you know the Lord's with you, so who cares what the consequences are then? I'd rather have God with me knowing I got consequences coming my way, but as long as God is with me, I'm okay. But if God ain't with me, I'm not okay. <laughs> so our first thing all the time is to make sure that we get reconnected and right with God no matter what. A lot of people know him here. But not here. He's not asking for your head. He's asking for your heart. Amen. So it says, don't be deceived. Verse 8, for he who sows to the flesh will reap corruption. Well, how do you think corruption is all over the world? People are sowing in the flesh. Look at everywhere. This is what the enemy does. He gets people to sow in the flesh and it opens the door of corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Wow. And let us grow, not grow weary while doing so, for in due season we shall reap the good if we don't lose heart. If we don't fall away. Amen. So again, deception is the weapon of the evil. Fear is their power. It's constantly promoting and sowing, getting people to sow in the flesh. That's how, all this, that's how all corruption is all over the world. It started from the beginning. Didn't they sow in the flesh? Right in the garden. That's where everybody got thrown out. No flesh is in, in, going to glory in God's presence. Amen? So people are sowing and promoting the works of the flesh by reacting to the influence of sin known as the presence of evil. It's installed at a global level to allow Evil infiltration and breaking down the barrier of restraints. Remember, the enemy knows it is the body of Christ that restrains him, or he'd be full blown. Why do you think there's an awakening? The awakening is to build a restraining wall. That's what's going on right now. 
It's to build the restraining wall to push back the powers of darkness. People are being awakened and there are those who are being taken because they're falling asleep. We are the restrainers of evil. Amen? This is a global event. That's why there's a global awake. Look how many people are awakening and beginning to resist evil. And the Lord said to me the other day, he says, you know, you're rebellious. I said, okay. He said, you were born that way. And you're born again that way. I said, what do you mean? He says, because when you were born in the flesh, you were rebellious to the spirit. Now you're born to the spirit and you're rebellious to the flesh. I said, oh, I, okay, I'm, I'm done with that one. So we are rebels against the flesh. Amen? But we are submitters to the Spirit. Remember, you got, we have to look at the area where God allows us to see the things that He sees. And when, you know, we, we become so short-sighted sometimes. When there's a global event, there's an eternal event. You've got to remember the earth was established for eternal citizenship qualification. <laughs> Everybody gets qualified for eternity. I think God... I don't want to say learned his lesson, you know. <laughs> After Lucifer blew it, he said, that's it. <laughs> but he foresaw everything. So now we are tested citizens for eternity. That's why he says many who come to me and say, Lord, Lord, aren't going to enter. Why? Because they practice lawlessness. That's works of the flesh. Regardless of what. He's not looking at what you can do for him. He doesn't need me and you to do anything for him. Amen. He could actually do it all by himself. He just, he's allowing me and you to partake of what he's doing. That is a pleasure and an honor. It isn't a work. Why? Because we are now resting in God. We don't labor for him. We labor unto him. There's a difference. This is where God's love is expressed constantly. This is where you and I have an understanding of who we are and the reality of our identity. See, that's the things the enemy steals all the time. Always tries to get us that we have to earn God's love. We don't. We earn God's trust. <laughs> when you find the place of rest, praise God. You know that everything's going to work to the good. That's all you're doing is cooperating with the leading and carrying of the Spirit. Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Rest in God. Oh, happy days. Are you resting in God? Second Thessalonians two. Verse 5. Everybody there? Let's speak it together. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time? For the, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Isn't it at work everywhere? It's causing people to sow in the flesh, to reap corruption and open doors of demonic influence. People don't realize how many powers of darkness from hell they're called drawing up and not even knowing it. Look at all the songs they sing, they're drawing up darkness. That's their purpose. Secular songs draw up the powers of darkness from hell. And they don't know it. It's already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. That's the body of Christ. And then the lawless one will be revealed. He'll be exposed more. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. I think he grieves the Holy Spirit. And with all unrighteous deception, unrighteous deception, 
among those who perished because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, there's an area where you carry God's love because you also love him, but you love him because he is truth. So you love truth, not the truth of the world, the eternal truth, which connects you to the future, to live from the future to the present. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion. Why? Because they rejected God's love. That they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Ouch. We are the restrainers until we completely are removed. Again, the battle is against evil forces of influence that want to break down the wall of restraint that is the body of Christ. Amen. And, and, of course, those who are the restrainers are those who are in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, in the integrity of Christ, responding to the attacks, not reacting. The moment you react, you sow in the flesh. It breaks the barrier. It breaks the chain. And there's a ripple effect of every break in the restraining wall. Somebody's got to pick up for the one that rebelled, the one that sinned, the one that went out of place. The one that chose to go back. Somebody's got to replace that person. Somehow. It's got to be connected. Is everybody okay? In Matthew 12. Matthew 12. In verse 43. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak. When an unclean spirit goes out of a person or a man, he goes through dry places and he's seeking what? He's seeking rest. In other words, he's seeking a place where he can get fed. Where he can use a person to feed himself. What? Well, how does he get fed? He causes that person to sow in the flesh so that they're reacting all the time. He goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return from where I came from or my home. And when he comes, he finds it empty and swept and put in order. Listen, he found it swept and put in order, but it was empty. It was empty, in other words. There wasn't a filling of the Spirit, even though you could go through the, all the formula, the praise and worship, but the heart can be distant. He said, they come to me and they worship me in vain. Why? Because they worship with the head, not the heart. There's a difference. You can come and sing every song. At least you're sowing in the Spirit. Amen? Give an opportunity for God to move on your behalf. But there's a place where you become into a place of rest carried by the presence of God, led by the Spirit of God, and desire to be in His presence, not because you have to or you're forced to, or you know you got to sing the songs because you're sowing in the Spirit to reap life. No, none of that matters. You're doing it because you want to connect. Amen? You want to have fellowship. You want to have a relationship. You're not doing it for anything else to get freed, get delivered, get healed. You're doing it because you love them. There's a difference. Oh, hallelujah. And these spirits will come back. So when you're not filled, they know it. They come knocking. Too many people are saying, who's there? Or come on in without even looking, asking who's there. That's the problem. Nobody's asking, who told me that? That's the same thing as knocking. Don't say, who's there? You just said, come on in. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's amazing. Listen, whatever you've been through, the same spirits are going to come back. I'm going to say that whatever you've been through, those same spirits will come back. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter 
where you been, how long you been a believer. They come back, they wait for that prime opportunity. He says, then I'll return to my house, which I came, and when, it's com when he comes and he finds it empty, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> it's swept and put in order, but it's empty. Why? The person's dry, lukewarm. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first state. So it shall be with this wicked generation. Why does it get worse? Because more of them need to get fed. Now they've got control. It doesn't get better. It gets worse. That's why you've got to stop it right at the first compromise. Right? Why? Because you're no longer resting in God. If the enemy can get you to sow in the flesh, it comes out of the rest. Does everybody get it? You come out of God's rest, then you become anxious, selfishness. And you don't even know it. It doesn't have to be manifested big. It's always little. It's the little leaven that leavens the whole lump. Amen? And next thing you can do, you're already thinking about something else. Because the enemy's distracting. Why the enemy's opening the door and bringing more and in. The next thing you know, you have a desire for something else. Then you start making excuses in your thoughts. Reasoning. Can't fulfill vows. Can't please God. Do what you think is best for you. Instead of what's best according to his way. Oh, that is such a ploy of the enemy. The attack is against the restrainers of wickedness. Listen, the devil doesn't need to go after the ones that are not restrainers. He's going after you as a restrainer. Amen? <laughs> Again, this person was not filled <laughs> or still had open doors of worldly love, love of self. Now he's able to deny self, no power, and needed to put his self in self-storage, you know. 2 Corinthians 13. Oh, happy days. Verse 1. Rest in God. And this is... This will be the third time I am coming to you. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Verse 2. I told you before and foretell as if I were present the second time, and now being absent, I write to those who have sinned before and to all the rest, that if I come again, I will not spare. Since you seek a proof of Christ speaking in me, who is not weak toward you, but mighty in you. For though he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourself. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. You know, when he says examine yourself, are you in the rest? Are you in the spirit? See, in this rest, there's a complete trust. There's a complete confidence that God is able to do whatever he needs to do. And there's a complete peace in this rest. So there's a complete trust, there's a complete confidence, and a complete peace. Hallelujah. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith in other words, whether you're connected or not. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified by what? Grieving the spirit or opening the door to the devil. Amen. Make no room for the devil. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Faith in you connected in the spirit. A place of rest, trust, peace, confidence. Remember, fear and any works of the flesh disqualifies that position. 
and James chapter 4. So without self-examination, you will never advance. To be honest with yourself. Amen. That's one of the problems. People aren't honest with themselves. If you have to make an excuse or justify, that's not, you're not being honest with yourself. You're actually covering up. You're covering it up. Oh, happy days. Verse 1, James 4, verse 1, let's speak it together. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for the pleasure that were in your members? In other words, desires for the flesh. You lust and do not have, you murder and covenant cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And you ask and don't receive because you ask it amiss that you may spend it on your flesh, your pleasures, fulfillments of the flesh. He says, adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God, it's hatred towards God. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. In other words, this is where he says, do not love the world or the things in it. A friend of the world is the character of the world. He's a lover of the world because he doesn't love just the materials, but he carries the love of the world in him. That's what's got to be removed from every believer, the love of the world. Until it is removed, that person is still dangerous, still compromised, still will justify, still can't be trusted. Is everybody okay? Verse 5. Or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but He gives more grace, therefore He says, God resists the what? The proud. But He gives the plan of escape to the what? Humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and He'll flee from you. Hello. The battle to break... The restraining banner and wall is to get you to lose <laughs> your rest in God. Amen? And bringing fear, which is the reaction to the flesh, and open the door to corruption. So in this, he just warned us of two things that are vital. He said, pride. Pride. Pride will kill you. Pride will open the door. Why? Because pride says, I can do it. Pride says, I'm okay. See, there's a difference between pride, because pride cannot submit. There's a difference between humble. Humble says, yes, Lord. Humble says, expose me, Lord. Humble examines self. Humble looks to see if the love of the world is still in them. Is there any desire of the world still here? Look, at, there's nothing wrong. And again, I'm talking about the love of the world in the area where it's the character of the world ruled by the prince of power of air, the, amen, where there's still a desire. There's still a place of the old. Does everybody understand? So many people are, don't even realize they're still in management and not freedom. They're still managing their life. They're still managing their addiction. They're still managing their loss. They're still managing their fears. They're not free. Why? Because the love of the world is still there. When the love of the world has been exchanged for the love of God, those things begin to go away. Then there's a rest of God that fills, that the Spirit will lead you and carry you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go somewhere else. Proverbs. Proverbs. Chapter 3. Submit to God. 
Well, submitting to God means you submit to all of his, what he has. So if you're involved in a specific ministry and so forth, then you submit to what God's rules are of that place. If you're not submitting to the God's rules of that place, then you're not submitting to God. Amen? If you go in a store and decide to take everything off the shelf, you're not submitting to that store, are you? You're going to get arrested, and there will be a consequence. <laughs> and you won't have peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 3. Submission. Hallelujah. Right now, people are, are not submitting to some of the ordinances. Why? Because they're not godly. They're ruled by tyrants. You've got governors out there that are trying to control people. They are lying. The plague is not as bad as everybody thinks. In fact, uh, we're putting up something that's going to expose it tremendously about someone that was involved in all of this, and he's exposing it. This was nothing but a demonic deep state attack. Not saying that there's not a flu out there. Yes, but they created it. And it was taken from this country and brought into another country because this country says it's illegal to do it here. And then this country gave the person a grant to do it over there. And then they got released. But you'll be able to see the video shortly. What's the name of it? You remember? I don't know. We'll be putting it up on an eternal library. I sent it to Viv. But there's so much stuff going on. So people are now protesting everywhere, coming against these rules and regulations, because they know that they're trying to engage them and imprison them. you got to remember that the dark forces in, of the Democratic Party, they want to destroy this country. They want to eliminate humanity. They want to. They don't want to come back to Congress right now. They want to prolong this as long as possible. Why they eat all of this ice cream out of the refrigerators and freezers and with their $24,000 refrigerators. <laughs> it's incredible to me. So Trump's going to have to put a law in to get them back. Can you imagine Congress that gets paid? Now they get a paycheck. Maybe they ought to lose theirs and see what happens. I think they might show up. Hallelujah. You think the enemy wants the churches to be open? No. Why? We're the restrainers. Everyone say, I'm a restrainer of evil. Hallelujah. Verse 1, Proverbs 3. Let's speak it. My son, do not forget my word or my law. Keep your heart. Uh, but let your heart keep my what? Commands are his words. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. In other words, you're going to be in his rest. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways do what? Acknowledge him. And he shall what? Direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Hello. Maybe so many people are getting sick because they're not doing this. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. I'm going to tell you there will be a test from heaven. Everybody gets a stimulus check. He wants to know whether you're going to tithe it or not. You either get blessed or get cursed. And with all the first fruits of your increase, so your barns will be what? Filled with plenty. And your vats will what? Overflow with new wine. Listen, don't despise the chasing of the Lord when you get, when you do something stupid. <laughs> Nor detest his corrections. For whom the, love lo the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. 
Now, this is wild. You see, God corrects us not because he doesn't like us, because he loves us. So many people get offended when correction comes because the love of the world is still in them. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Is everybody there? Wow. Oh. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. In other words, fulfillment. He's our fulfillment. Length of days is in her right hand and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Peace. It means you're in the rest. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. Praise God. Rest, trust, confidence, and faith, love, allowing him to hold you, and comfort you, and empower you. You are complete in his rest. Amen? And in this, believe it or not, you get understanding. You get wisdom because he's constantly feeding you in this rest. It's hard to eat on the run. You end up wearing it instead of eating it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's going to direct you into your paths and into your battles with victory. Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4. Are you resting in God? Hebrews 4, verse 1. And that's where the Lord says, are you allowing him to build the house? Amen. Are we doing things to please man or to please God? Verse 1, therefore, since the promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have a come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. Why? They weren't receiving it. They heard it, but they didn't receive it. See, there was still a place of rebellion towards God. Why? Because of the love of the world. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he said, so I swore my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. Again, he designates a certain day saying in David, today after such a long time, as it has been said today, if you will hear his voice and do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works, as God did from his. This is powerful. That's that place of rest where he carries you. He leads you. It's effortless let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest lest anyone fall according to the same example of what disobedience now he uses the word he said for the word of god is living and powerful and sharper than any edged two-edged sword piercing even the division of the soul and of the spirit and of joints and marrows and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart and there is no creature hidden from his sight but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must all give an account. Wow. So we're entering and maintaining this position of resting in God. 
It is not dormant, but active. Amen? Why? Because you are in a constant state of response, not react. We must be alert and be consistent of the physical and the spiritual. Amen? With a constant self-examination by his word so that we maintain that place and position of rest. And Psalm 64. Psalm 64. Hallelujah. Let's start at verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my meditation. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Does the fear bring peace? No. Does it bring rest? No. Hide me from the secret plots of the wicked, from the rebellion of the workers of iniquity who sharpen their tongue like swords and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the blameless. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They encourage themselves in evil matter. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will see them? They devise iniquities. They have perfected a shrewd scheme. Both the inward thought and the heart of a man are deep. Now, you got to understand, he's trying to penetrate in your thoughts. He's trying to change your heart to become hardened. He does these things, not in the front of you. I can tell you that the devil doesn't come and warn you every day. Hi, this is what I'm going to do to you. He doesn't do that. He tries to get you blindsided. He attacks you in every way when you least expect it. Verse 7, but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Why? See, if you're in that place of rest, God is your defender. The battle belongs to the Lord. Amen? God shall shoot them at, at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. So he will make them stumble over their own tongue. And who see them shall flee away. All those who see them. All men shall fear and shall declare the work of God. And they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. The attacks against your rest in God. Remember, when you get moved from this rest, it breaks the chain, the wall of restraining. Psalm 101. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Psalm 101, verse 1. Everybody there? Almost. Let's speak it. I will sing of mercy and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. That's a place of rest. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy the one who is haughty, look, and proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes will be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early will I destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. This is a proclamation of maintaining rest in God. Philippians 4.
resting in God. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Are we there? Glory. Be anxious for what? Everything? <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say what? Rejoice. The joy of the Lord is your strength, and where the presence of the Lord is, there is joy. So if you're not in joy, you ain't in God's presence. And if you're not in joy, you're not in His rest. And if you're not in joy, you're not in His love. You're in the love of the world and not the love of God because you're still fighting for your life. Verse 5, or verse, yeah, verse 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is what? At hand. Do you see that? Let your gentleness be known to all men. In other words, your rest. That the Lord is what? With you. You can tell whether somebody's not in rest or not. They can't even sit still. They can't focus. They're not in rest. A terrible place. They're actually in torment. They may be managing their fear and their torment, but they're not in rest. He says, be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God in the peace of God, which is his rest which surpasses all understanding. In other words, you ain't got to figure it all out. Will guide your hearts and your minds. Will guide your heart and your thoughts through Christ Jesus. Now, that's powerful. Finally, brethren, whatever things that are true, whatever things that are noble, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are pure, whatever things that are lovely, whatever things that are good report, if there is any virtue... If there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be what? With you. In other words, you will be in his rest. Is everybody okay? Anxiousness is fear. Fear disqualifies us. And it will break that chain of restraint, that wall. I'm going to close at Hebrews 3. Resting in God. In verse 7. Hebrews 3, verse 7. No, that's not right, God. Kind of. Hebrews, yeah, verse 7. Yeah, thanks, God. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and I saw my, my works. They saw my works, what, 40 years? Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my way. So I swore in my wrath that they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ. In other words, you are a partaker of his character, of his divine nature. You are a partaker of his power. You are a partaker of him as a joint heir of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence, remember, what is this rest? It is complete confidence. It's complete peace, amen, and complete trust. That's this rest. He says, if you hold fast into that position, you're steadfast there to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Now, you and I have been come out of Egypt led by the Christ. Amen. What's Egypt? 
Egypt is the bondage of the world. Now, with, with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned? Those corpses fell in the wilderness. And to whom did he swear that they might not enter his rest? But those who did not, what? Obey. So we see that they could not enter into the rest because of unbelief. Now we are seeing this globally. Remember the purpose of this attack is to get you out of your rest to break the wall of restraint. Every time the wall of restraint is broke, they get access to something. And we're trying to drive them out. That's what this awakening is all about. Driving them out. And people who are awakening, they're grabbing hands in the spirit and becoming the wall of Christ to build this wall huge, huge, bigger globally to drive out, expose all darkness and then offer an opportunity of salvation to those who have been taken captive. This is a rescue mission. Amen? It's not only a rescue mission, it's a protection mission. To protect the body and those who have been taken as quick as possible and get them in position. Amen? Entering his rest is essential for each and every one of us. We are carried. We are led. There's no fear. There's no anxiousness. But complete trust, confidence, and peace in his word. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for the joy of the Lord that is our strength and for making a way where there seems to be no way. So, Lord, anyone here that's not in your fullness of your rest, I ask that you expose all love of the world, that they may dump it, get rid of it, cut loose from it, surrender completely to you, and fall into your arms and into your rest from this day forward in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring up any ties and all.